Hello everyone, my name is Clementine. Welcome back to Clementine Creative and I'm back with another video tutorial. This is the last video in the weekend course uh, series where we took a, took a look at basically how to get into digital painting. Um, this is the last section which is color. We're going to learn a little bit about color but mainly what we're going to try to do is uh, teach you how to paint in color. So I already did this video once and the recording got corrupted and I now I have to do it again. Uh, so it's going to be a little bit strange talking about the same thing again, uh, but you know, uh, hopefully we can uh, hopefully can get it done. So with that in mind, let's get into talking a little bit about uh, what we will be doing in this video. All right. Okay, so here we are uh, in the objectives list, and we're going to talk about the things we're going to do today. So the first thing we're going to tackle is color. We're going to talk about some of the things that you should do in color and some of the things you shouldn't. Uh, the next thing we're going to talk about is color values. Uh, these are very important. Color values is something that a lot of um, beginning artists leave out. Uh, it's something that I also did. And it's uh, an interesting theme that it, and that's the most important part about digital painting. It's definitely color values. So the next thing is color shading and color shading advanced. Basic and advanced. We have uh, two of them. Uh, so in the basic one, we will just apply some basic color and try to get the shape more or less there. Uh, an advanced one, we're gonna try to um, bring in the out, you know, we're gonna try to enhance the lighting and just make the painting overall better. So we're gonna be using the example of an arm uh, and I'm gonna show you some of the tricks that you can do when you're uh, working with color. So let's get into this. So the first thing I wanna talk about is color. Color is, as we can see it right here, is very important in digital painting. Uh, it adds, or in any kind of painting, it just adds atmosphere, it adds feeling um, uh, and mood. It sets a lot of things and it's very important when doing production paintings or characters. You know, you can't just make a character in black and white. However, when you're starting out, it can be a very dangerous thing uh, because you get lost in it. Uh, when you're starting out and you have to think about painting stuff, you have to think about designing it and what color it'll be, it's very much overwhelming for for you know for you to grasp on. So I definitely recommend not working with color for at least you know like two months when painting, um, just so that you get a feel for digital painting so you don't have to at least think that much about what you're gonna do. Uh, but once you get through that, you come to something called color values. Now, let's talk about that. So what are color values? Uh, color values are basically the lightest, let's say a shade of red. Color values for red would be the lightest red and the darkest red. And now a lot of mistakes that happen when you're starting out is that you think that the lightest red is the one I, that you see right now. So if you look at the screen and you see this on the right, where we have this color picker tool up, uh, and you see this little square here, one color is blue and one is red. Uh, so the, the lower one is showing the current color that I have selected and the upper one is showing the color that I'm currently going to select. So you can see the, one is, the, the upper one is changing. And the uh, important thing is that you would think that this, you know, that this is going from darkest to the lightest, which is actually not true. Um, because if, if all of this was black and white, uh, and if we compare this reds, let's say we have this red color and we turn it to black and white, what's going to happen, it's not going to be white. It's actually going to be this this amount of gray. So this is where that red stands. The lightest color or the, rightest, the, the brightest red is actually the one down here. So it's pink, which you would think it makes sense. Uh, but when you're starting out, you don't really think about these things and it just makes the entire picture look flat. Uh, I could explain more about how this works. The I guess the simple or the short story is the darkest color is on the bottom, anywhere on the bottom. But if you go more to the left, it's more saturated. If you go to the right, it's more... It's uh, Let me say that again. Uh, if you go to the left, it's more desaturated. If you go to the right, it's definitely more saturated. And we can also see that on the top. Then on the top, it's very nice saturated red. And the, on the left side, it's get, it gets all the way more gray and just uh, muddy and just pinkish, you know. Um, but if you go down, you can see that it, it's all saturated here. So the way you're supposed to pick colors, if you have something, let's say you have a ball and you want to paint it red, the, the darkest color should be selected on the right side and on the bottom, and the brightest color should go diagonally to the left on the top, see? 
this is how you should select your colors. This is how you get the darkest and the brightest reds. So keep that in mind, but you can also see that right now in action. All right, so here we are in color shading uh, basic, I guess. You can see that we have the basic color already down. Uh, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna. This is a different approach. This is how you. This is how I work on digital paintings. Uh, I don't have the line art, and I uh, and then I go over it. Uh, I actually start off with no line art, and then I digitally paint over it. So you've already saw this process when you watch my speed you know, time lapse paintings. Um, but let's talk a little bit about what I'm gonna do now. So I'm basically gonna try to now show you everything I've talked about before, and put it in this arm. All right. So let's go. The first thing is values. Uh, color values and regular values are exactly the same except one has color and one is black and white. So let's talk about values. You see we took the darkest color for our skin which is the one right down here. Very saturated brown color and it's, you know, it's dark. So now I want to make this arm a little bit brighter which means I'm gonna add a hint of yellow in there. So that's that's basically all knowledge of how skin works. But basically what I'm going to do is now I'm going to go upwards here to the to where the white area is. More upwards to that and I'm going to select a color from there. So that would be this color and now I'm going to simply apply it. So I already know what this arm looks like because I have a reference on the left side, the one we did uh, I guess yesterday. Uh, if you did watch this video uh, or yesterday's video on Saturday and if you're watching this one today on uh, Sunday. And then I add some on the bicep and we add some of the tricep and a little bit down here because that's a little muscle there and then we have the arm we have this uh, forearm has quite a lot of muscles here if you ever looked in anatomy pictures um, it's quite a bunch of them there so here we just add more and more and uh, slowly we'll get it down and now I just want to shade everything in as a cylinder Add these knuckles. There we go. All right, so this is the the basics of the basics, but we're gonna obviously make it even better. So let's refine this by adding even brighter color on top of that, making it a little bit brighter. So we wanna add even more light on top. Here we go, more color. And slowly we can see that it's starting to develop in something recognizable. So just adding more and more color. And some of these knuckles again. All right, so we have that. I'm gonna add a little bit here for all these little tiny muscles here that these probably aren't actually that realistic, um, but they're here now. So that's how we're gonna do it. Um, and now I wanna do is I'm actually gonna switch something on right here which is the advanced color uh, shading layer and what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna move on onto advanced shading and uh, we're not gonna talk about how you would approach this you're just gonna look at me and hopefully pull out a technique I'm gonna obviously uh, commentate what I'm doing the entire way so it won't be completely silent alright so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just going to add more color here because you see this part is a little bit more flat. So a lot of color gets captured there. Uh, then we have this muscle that goes here and it goes down to the chest. And then there's this little shadow here. So what I'm going to select now is a dark, the dark, even darker color than the one we had before. Uh, not black though, but pretty dark. And we put that color here, right where these we want those little bit stronger shadows right so here we go we have these stronger shadows here there's not that many of them though so uh, you need to be careful not to overdo it uh, and now we take an even brighter color there we go almost uh, almost to the white and just add that on top there we go and now I'm gonna move in Make sure that I get these nice shadow effects going on. Make it all look more realistic. This 
so it's already starting to get out uh, to to uh, get a little bit more shape if I may if I may say it like so you know it's starting to get more recognizable we can add that shadow in here there we go and now I'm gonna add more brightness down here on these muscles alright so it, it, you can already see that it's starting to get a little bit better you know definitely more recognizable what I'm going to do now is that uh, I'm gonna add some bounce light so bounce light we just lit up the area there a little bit and another thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and grab first of all what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the darkest color right here and I'm gonna grab blue the same shade ex except blue and what this will do except I'm gonna saturate it slightly more but what this will do is it's this is again more advanced thing what you can do is you add a little bit different shades of color where the shadows is and it just creates a little bit of a cooler effect this is definitely something you need to know if you're gonna be doing um, digital paintings like production paintings because um, if this let's say this character is outside it definitely has a blue blue hues a blue hue blah. if this character is outside it definitely you can definitely see some blue hue on his body so that's something important more in digital painting when you're doing like production paintings but when you're doing regular paintings for, of characters this is not that important so again add that shadow uh, and now as you can see I switched off to my uh, square brush uh, because uh, now I want to, to detail this part this uh, arm a little bit more and I need <coughs> strong and uh, sharp edges so I don't want everything to look so soft because it did look pretty soft as you can see but you know it's slowly working uh, working towards the goal working towards the finished product I guess so again, I really do hope that these videos uh, helped you out. Um, I uh, definitely, you know, I, I think I put in quite a lot of uh, work. I really wanted to make them nice and uh, helpful. So I hope I uh, succeeded in that. You know, that's what I'm kind of going for when I'm making tutorials like these. Uh, but it is uh, hard to definitely, you know, it's very hard to give you... 100% knowledge on what I'm trying to teach so what I'm basically trying to say with this is it's not gonna 100% make you better all of the sudden and uh, that's a bit mortifying but a lot of the work uh, you need to do yourself really but I'm really trying to uh, give out the tips here so that, uh, that you know it's gonna make all of your uh, exercises much easier and much more effective okay the next part that I want to render out a little bit more is definitely the forearm uh, but actually I'm gonna concentrate on this part a little bit more the tricep area I add more a little bit more light there uh, I'm gonna shade down this area that part is that part is fine uh, we're not gonna you know mess with that too much so let's go down to this area here which would be the forearm we want to make sure that these edges are nice and sharp like we see on the I guess and that would could be a reference uh, picture on the left it's uh, basically the painting from the from yesterday if you watch this on uh, that video on Saturday when it was uploaded then it's uh, definitely yesterday but it's basically in the last video we did that arm so uh, now I'm basically referencing it and uh, just getting these shadows in there so you know this is a very simple process uh, digital painting after a while let's say if uh, if you're watching this and your goal in life is to let's say be a character concept artist uh, you'll come soon to learn that uh, the actual painting part is the the easy part of your job it's the designing that's hard uh, that designing is definitely harder than uh, painting.
but some people actually can design pretty well except they don't have the uh, they're not too good in um, you know they're not too good with painting you know the actual uh, the actual practical work which uh, if you're like that that's good because uh, learning how to paint is much easier than learning how to design uh, I would say definitely so yeah we're slowly coming to a uh, to a stage where I'm sort of satisfied with what we have so yeah you know uh, this is kind of a time-consuming process but um, you know eventually you'll get it down so what I'm gonna do now is gonna add a little bit more shadow here just tiny bits Uh, I'm also going to add a brighter shade of uh, color here. So it just pops things out a little bit more on the top here. So, yeah. I've actually been uh, editing these videos and I've realized that a lot of the times I'm just quiet and not saying anything, uh, which is uh, not the best thing when you're trying to make professional or, you know, tr try to make professional tutorials, I guess. You try to make them look, I try, I try to make them look professional, but I know that they're definitely not professional. I'm sure that there's a million better tutorials out there uh, than this one. Uh, that, and also I've noticed that I say the word uh, so a lot uh, and it's funny because I actually wanted to add uh, a meter that would count how many times I, s I said so uh, because every time I start a new uh, theme or something like that it just uh, every time, then I just say uh, so we're going to take a look at or so here we are uh, and it just looks it just sounds funny when I say it so many times Uh, if you want to show me your work, uh, if you want uh, me to criticize your work or something like that, uh, I would be happy to do it. And uh, you can actually send me your work. I'm uh, sorry I never actually mentioned this. I'll be very happy to criticize your work. And if you actually did these tutorials, if you're following along, I'd be happy to see uh, uh, how yours uh, turned out. And, uh, you know, if you have a uh, progress that you want to show me, that's also cool. If you want to, you know, basically show your paintings in my videos, that's fine. I can... Uh, show them in the videos, showcase them, uh, add critiques. So if, if you're interested in that kind of thing, um, just uh, you know, message me. You know, comment in the comment section or on DeviantArt uh, or on email, and uh, you know, we can definitely work this out. Uh, I think it'd be fun if uh, I could take a look at some of your uh, art, and I, I feel like it'll uh, even you know just make us know each other a little bit more, so we won't be. Um, it's I want to know who watches my videos honestly uh, is it uh, students or uh, is it like you know hobby people who want to just do this as a hobby or is it someone who or you know who actually wants to do this uh, as, as as a you know career uh, you know really interested um, but yeah this this thing actually came to an end more or less uh, it could definitely uh, use more work uh, but uh, for what it is, it's it's not bad. Um, but the main purpose of this was actually to hopefully, you know, hopefully get you understand how you can get into it. Uh, I can't 100% teach you how to digitally paint. That is uh, very difficult to teach. Uh, a lot of it is really just hard work. And uh, uh, watching videos probably will help you with the technique, but. Um, Basically, I recommend you that after you're done watching this video, you actually, uh, if you haven't already, uh, try to try to imitate some some of the things that you see here and uh, see if they work out for you. I know that I worked uh, pretty hard on digital painting and uh, it turned out pretty cool. You know, I definitely improved ever since I started. But yeah, again, this video is slowly coming to an end. I want to thank everyone for watching this video. 
uh, watching all of my videos so far. I hope these videos, this weekend course helped you because this weekend course, this is the last video in the weekend course. Uh, however, uh, I am interested in doing more weekend courses where I talk about, let's say, how to paint eyes or mouths or, uh, you know, some of some of other things, uh, maybe a certain body part, how to do tattoos, how to do clothing, you know, how to paint, uh, there's different things. So if there's anything in particular that you'd want me to, to showcase or to just tackle here in the show, comment in uh, comment below and uh, I'll take a look and uh, make videos. So uh, let's go to the objectives list, see what are the things we've done, and then we'll say a couple last uh, final words and uh, end this video. So uh, here we are in uh, tier three. Uh, our objective list, we've talked about color and color values, uh, where we talked on some of the things you should do and some of the things you shouldn't do. Also, how important values is. Remember, color values are the same thing as the grayscale, except uh, you, may, you need to make sure that you don't pick the most saturated color as your brightest. It has to be an actual brighter color. Uh, but this is something that you'll definitely learn uh, through time. Uh, for the beginning, you should definitely just paint in black and white. Uh, and then we came to color shading, where we basically painted the the, the arm, you know. Uh, first we did a very basic layer of color and shadows and lights, and then we took it to the next level. I really hope it helped you, that you pulled something off of these tutorials. Uh, if you did, uh, leave a comment on what helped you the most and what you want to see more. If you have some of your work that you want to share with me, please uh, message me. Uh, and uh, if you want any critiques, I can also do that. Uh, but with that in mind, we, we completed this entire weekend course. Uh, hopefully you're better at painting than you were at the beginning of these videos. Um, if not, I'm sorry. Um, I'll try to do a better job next time. <laughs> this video was the shortest of them all, but it definitely brought a little bit more interest in it. This is, uh, if you ever want to see any kind of other things that, you know, that you want to see painted, uh, don't be afraid to comment. But uh, yeah. I guess uh, I'll see you next Friday with another character tutorial video. Uh, so yeah, until then, stay uh, stay classy, uh, drink some juice, and uh, yeah, eat some bacon if if you're not a vegetarian. <laughs> if you're a vegetarian, eat some eat some tomatoes, I guess. Uh, yeah, all right, goodbye. Uh, commitment to something, uh, you can get very far, and that's uh, really what everything in life is all about. So. Uh, this kind of thing is just going to require...